Well, good morning, church. I greet you in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, we are continuing to give thanks to God for keeping us and sustaining us uh, throughout these uncertain and uh, difficult times. Um, just a reminder that we will be resuming our Sunday Lord's Day worship service uh, on the first Sunday in July. So that will be the 5th of July. We will be resuming our uh, services. We are busy putting every measure in place to ensure that we have a safe service um, and abide by all the necessary uh, protocols and so uh, do pray for us and we look forward to resuming our services uh, with you uh, very soon of course god willing well in your bibles turn with me to james chapter 4 james chapter 4 and we'll read again from verse 13 through to verse 17 and what i want to do this morning is kind of reflect more on the text than what we did last week and so james chapter 4 from verse 13 again Come now, you who say, today or tomorrow we will go into such and such a town and spend a year there and trade and make a profit, yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? For you are a mist that appears for a little time and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we will live and do this or that. As it is, you boast in your arrogance. All such boasting is evil. So whoever, so whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it, for him it is sin. Let's pray. Oh God, we thank you for this Lord's Day, Lord, in which we are able to find ourselves in your word. And we do pray now that you open our eyes and open our hearts, oh God, that we will hear, O oh Lord, and see and receive the truth of your word. Uh, to encourage us in our walk before you, Lord. And so bless this time now, as we do ask you these mercies in Jesus' name. Amen. And so last week we looked at the providence of God, and we saw how James calls our attention to the reality of God's provid providence in the statement that he says here, Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we will live and do that. And in that very verse, James establishes for us the backdrop, if you will, of God's providence that is behind our lives. And we could even say in front of our lives, surrounding our lives. And we discussed this in detail last week, God's direct and detailed involvement in our life or in our lives. Um, and then we came and we concluded, of course, with James chapter 4 from verse 13. Well, this morning I want to spend some time focusing more intently on this passage and just um, draw some more applications from this text that we didn't really get a chance to delve in that much last week. So, so consider this part 2 of uh, James chapter 4 verse 13 to 17. And if last week's theme was providence, this week's theme is presumptuousness. If last week's theme was providence, this week's theme is presumptuousness. And the idea really is from James chapter 4 verse 13 that we must not live presumptuously. We must not live presumptuously. And that's the theme that we get uh, from this text. You know, some of the most embarrassing and disappointing moments in our life um, results from getting ahead of ourselves. We know uh, to do something out of turn, uh, to fail to wait for the right time, perhaps, to not appreciate the priority or, or to be in a hurry with something. How often and how quickly are we uh, and do we get ahead of ourselves? We say something out of turn or at the wrong time. We do something without waiting and we are called um, forward. We act and what we do is not necessarily wrong. It is just done at the wrong time with perhaps the wrong people, and perhaps even in the wrong way. I think we, um, as colored people, have an interesting word to describe, you know, when we get ahead of ourselves. Uh, we call it fuabarach. You are getting ahead of yourself. Uh, now here James speaks to us to not live our lives in a way where we get ahead of ourselves, uh, where we get presumptuous in our lives, where we get presumptuous in the way we think and in the way we deal and in the way we transact in life. He says, come now, you who say you're going to do this. Come now, you who say you're going to go here. Come now, you who say you're going to Yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring. And so we see that we all tend to suffer from the sin, if you will, of presumptuousness. 
We all become presumptuous in the way we plan our lives, thinking and getting ahead of ourselves and thinking and getting ahead of God. In fact, that is where James stops them point in which their uh, plans are getting not only ahead of themselves, not only ahead of tomorrow, especially ahead of God. We must not live ahead of God. That's why James says, instead you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we will live and do this or that. Do you see, James right here is stopping us in our tracks and saying, get ahead of your souls. Don't live ahead don't live presumptuously and we brothers and sisters get ahead of ourselves in life when we live without thought to God when we live without regard for God's will when we live our lives thinking we own it we determine it and we set its course we are living ahead of ourselves if anything the year of 2020 has taught us that to live presumptuously is very dangerous to love thinking that we've got 2020 or this new year with our resolutions and our plans determined and sorted out uh, this year has taught us that we cannot live presumptuously because we do not know what tomorrow will bring january is quite different than june in 2020 and so we see then the dangers of living ahead of ourselves getting ahead of god and we are getting ahead of ourselves um and and, and when we do we need to be pulled back and we need to be mind that God determines our lives. He gave it, He sustains it, He will take it away and He determines what will happen even after He ceases our life in this world. So James cautions us and he says we ought to live in light of God's rule and in light of one who wills and we must come under His will. Uh, we must give us our lives and place ourselves firmly under the providence of God. To not do this is to assume we have life and death in our own hands. We determine it as, our, as we please. This is the path which the proverb writer says, there's a way that seems right in man's eyes, but the end of it is destruction. And so using our three points of last week, life's complexities, life's brevity, and life's um, uh, uncertainty. I want to use those three points as three reasons why it is dangerous to live presumptuously, why it is dangerous to get ahead of God. Firstly, because life is complex. Come now, you who say today or tomorrow we will go into such and such a town and spend a year there and trade and make a profit. Those who have seen a lot of life, those who have endured many years, those who have reached a good old, uh, old age, can tell you that life is difficult. Life is complex. We note implicit in this caution in verse 13, the complexity of life. And what we see that is that life consists, as one person comments on this passage says, think of all that is involved in life, today, tomorrow, Buying, selling, getting, gaining, losing, going here, going there. Life is made up of people and places, activities and goals, days and years. And each of us must make initial decisions day after day. Friends, life is difficult. Life is hard. Life is complex. When we consider the planning of 13, it becomes clear lot to be done. Life is not easy. There are no free rides. It's not an easy journey from having to face each day's issues not, and from having to go from place to place. And there's also the responsibility of making a living. Life is so complex. And so the question is, how can we afford in the midst of the complexities of life to not live with God actively involved in our lives, to not give ourselves completely over uh, to the purposes and plans of God? How can we live presumptuously when life is so hard and difficult, not knowing that God is there to help and to aid when there are days that must be endured, and each day comes with its own complexities, there are also responsibilities to consider. We note that these people, in verse 13, were planning, and in their planning they included not just how they will live, but also how they will make a living by buying and selling. Life demands that we draw close to God. Life demands that we draw close to God. The trouble that will come, 
We know this is a certainty. Each day will have its own trouble. Jesus said so. Matthew 6 verse 34. So do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will care for itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. You know what is certain? Life may not be. But tomorrow's trouble is certain. And we need to know that God is in control. And we can't divorce ourselves or separate ourselves from God because of the trouble of life. Life demands that we draw close to God, not only because of the trouble that will come, but also because of the sin that we struggle with. We have a daily battle. Besides the pressures and the worries of things outside of us, we must also contend and carefully give attention to the trouble and the worry of our soul and the sin that plagues it. Each day comes with a new opportunity to battle sin and to grow more close to God. Sometimes when I, when I speak to people and I, and I hear them in their distress speaking about the crisis or the problems and the troubles that they are facing in their life, I often wonder if the problem and the struggle of sin brings the same amount of distress. And so life demands we draw close to God because of the trouble that will come, because of the sin that we'll struggle with, and then also because of the desires that we will want to have fulfilled. Well, we have many desires that we want to have fulfilled, and, and Psalm 34 says we must delight ourselves in the Lord, and He will grant us the desires of our hearts. So the complexity of life urges us to have God actively involved to God, uh, in, in our lives, to, have, to, to ensure and to, and to give ourselves to the act the providence of God in our lives. We can't go at it alone. Go at it presumptuously. Too complex. Stop today. Give thought. Consider. Turn to God. Submit under His rule. And understand that He determines. He plans. And He purposes. And so because of the complexities of life, dear friends. Also number two, because of the uncertainty of life. Uh, you see, we can't live presumptuously because life is uncertain. It is the fool who lives presumptuously. It is the fool who goes ahead of God. It is the fool who gives no thought uh, uh, of his life before God because life is so uncertain. No one knows what this day will bring. No one knows what tomorrow will bring. James says, yet you do not know what your life will be like tomorrow. You are planning today, but you don't know what will be tomorrow. The new King James says, you do not know what will happen tomorrow. <laughs> the Proverbs 27 verse 1, do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what a day may bring forth. Love to be a good age, looks back on their lives, and one of the most frequent things we hear them say is this, if I know what I know now, I would never have. If I know what I know now, uh, the, the uh, assumption there and the idea there is that when they did it, they didn't know it, but now that they know, they would not have done it. The uncertainty of life forces us to draw close to God and plead with Him to lead our lives through our thoughts. It was the certainty of God's presence that eased David's fear, you'd remember, in Psalm 23. When he considered the valley of the shadow, with me, you are with me. James says, you do not know what your life will be like tomorrow. You go about your planning, you arranging, and you spare no thought for God, nor do you spare thought of your finite. He says, you do not know what will happen tomorrow. How finite, how small, how dependent should that not make? Us feel not dependent on flesh, not dependent on material things, not dependent on man or anybody else or structures or systems, but the, the, the uncertainty of tomorrow should cause us to be deeply dependent upon God. Again, it's not the planning in itself that is wrong. Don't get James wrong and don't get me wrong this morning. It's not that we must be unconcerned about our planning. Must in our, it must be in our concern for planning, we must also be concerned for God. And so James is not stopping their plan, stopping their presumptuousness, he's stopping their presumptuous planning, he's stopping their planning that's going without thought for God. You know, we have a story in the Bible of a man who thought like this. Just quickly in your Bibles, turn with me to Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12, and one of my, uh, my favorite encounters in the Gospels come from Luke chapter 12. And it tells us basically in a parable form, a man who lived like this from verse 13, Luke chapter 12. 
some in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. But he said to him, Man, who made me a judge or an arbitrator over you? And he said to them, Take care and be on your guard against all covetousness, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of his possession. And he told them a parable saying, The land of a rich man produced plentiful. And he thought to himself, What shall I do? For I have nowhere to store my crops. And he said, I will do this. I will tear down my barns and build larger ones. And there I will store all my grain and my goods. I will say to my soul, Soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, Fool, this night your soul is required of you. And the things which you have prepared, whose will they be? So is the one who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. What a sobering parable of living presumptuously, storing up today without knowing what will happen tonight, storing up today without giving thought to what happened tomorrow, being rich here on the earth without being rich towards God. And so we see here in this man the sin of self-centeredness. It was all for himself that he did what he did. He cared for no one else. He gave thought to no, to no one but, but himself, not even God. Uh, when we plan without God and we do consider his will and his ways, uh, and we don't consider his will and his ways, we become self-centered. And all the arrangements and all the planning that we do is all for our own convenience. And this is what happened in this man's case. No thought to God, no thought to others, just he's getting rich now. And so he'll store up more for himself. Presumptuous living is self-centered living. He doesn't care for God. And if we stop caring for God, we have little care for others. Presumptuous living in this man's case is also arrogance. Self-centeredness produces arrogance or pride. We see the arrogant ignorance of this man. Many good things for many years. Look at how, pres how he's presuming. He's presuming not only tomorrow. He's presuming not only next week. He's presuming that he will be rich not only next year. He says many good things for many years. Evidently, he has not heard the message of James. You do not know what tomorrow will be like. Is it wrong to plan for tomorrow seeing that we do not know what it's going to be like? No, it's not wrong to plan for tomorrow. It's wrong to plan without regard for God. It's not really the planning for tomorrow that's wrong, but the manner in which we plan and the attitude with which we plan. Are our plans self-centered or is it God-centered? Will our preparations be pleasing to God or are we only considering of how we can prosper our own self? Do we submit our plans always to God or are we wise in our own eyes? Verse 2 says, All the ways of a man are clean in his own sight, but the Lord weighs the motives. And that's why we must come before Him who weighs our motives. Therefore, the prophet writer also adds in verse 3, Commit your works to the Lord, and your plans will be established. We know Proverbs 3 verse 5, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not on your own understanding, in all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will make your part. Eyes in your own eyes, fear the Lord and turn away from evil. I fail to do any of that. So life is uncertain and we must submit ourselves to everything. In the words of one Christian song, and I'm sure you can relate to this, and I'm sure you'll be encouraged by the words of this Christian song, it goes as follows, I don't know about tomorrow, I just live from day to day. And I don't borrow from its sunshine, because the sky is my turn to grey. And I don't worry about the future, because I know what Jesus said. And today I'm going to walk right beside him, because he's the one who knows what is ahead. There are things about tomorrow that I don't seem to understand, but I know who holds tomorrow, and I know who holds my hand. And each step is getting brighter as the golden chairs I climb, or go golden stairs I climb, and every burden is getting lighter, and all the clouds are silver lined. And over there the sun is always shining, and no tears will ever dim the eye, and the ending of the rainbow where the mountains, they touch the sky. There are many things about tomorrow that I don't seem to understand, but I know who holds tomorrow. And I know who holds my, my hand. Yes, I know who holds my hand. 
One of my favorite verses comes from this parable that we've just considered now. And we will do well to keep this in mind, especially in, in the temptation to live presumptuously and selfishly, to live with um, this world um, uh, concerns front and center. In fact, this whole passage in James chapter 4 is about this world-centeredness. It's about a secular mindset. And we will do well to heed these words from Jesus. And he said to them, Take heed and beware of covetousness, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of the things he possesses. Where is our life? Our life is not in that which we accumulate. Our life is not in that which we gain in this world. Our life is not in the abundance of our possessions. Our life must be in God. And so we must heed presumptuous living because life is complex. We must be wary of presumptuous living because life is uncertain. And finally, we must be aware of presumptuous living because life is brief. And so James says, For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. We must be committed and determined, brothers and sisters, to embrace the will, rule, reign of God over our lives because life is brief. This life He has given us is finite. This life He has given us is short. This life and time that He has given us is but for a moment. It's but in comparison to a vapor. It's but for a, 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 a time, a little time, James says. A little time. We saw in the parable of the rich fool that he said to himself, I have many good things for many years. However, we do not know if that is the case. Life does not last forever. There's not many years promised to anyone. Even that very night when this man, who by all accounts was in good health, by all accounts was well um, established materially, uh, but that very night God came and demanded his soul. Here James says it's a vapor. Uh, the word vapor is used uh, to speak of smoke and incense. And the point is that life lasts like that for a moment when it goes up. It's there and then it's not. Job understood this because he... 7 verse 7. My life is a breath. A breath. If you, if you do not know the Lord... If you're hearing this message, perhaps over one of our streaming, you don't know the Lord, you have to ask yourself, will your life for like that rich man who stored up for himself so many good things and planned out his life, many good things for many years and sat back and rested and was married and, and all of these things. And that very night, unbeknownst to him, God came and demanded his soul. A life only for the and only concerned about this life without thought, regard, or care. What will happen when the perspective of what you've gained and what you've achieved and what you've earned and what you've become, a life lived without God to rule and to reign over it is a wasted life. This life you have, of which the Bible says is only a breath. Listen to how, uh, how it's described and how we are described. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 22. All flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of the grass. The grass withers and the flower falls away. We wither. We fall away. We are brief. We are but for a moment. We are but for a little time. Those are the words that the Bible uses to describe the life we presumptuously think will last forever and so you're going to be like are you going to be like the rich fool who only cared for his life here and now uh, uh, that life that was a vapor he planned and arranged and built his life for himself and himself alone apart from god and then that night god demanded his soul now is the time instead to give our souls if you will to god to submit our lives to him to turn to him today is the day of salvation if you hear his voice and if you hear his word do not harden your heart turn from your empty way despite how full your life might be turn from that empty way that brief moment that short time this life that is so finite turn from that now to god dear friend and 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 He will give you grace. He will give you mercy. He will fill your life with all and every good thing. And more than that, He will set your course on. As the Bible says, you will not perish, but have everlasting, everlasting life. A course on towards everlasting life. Uh, for those who know the Lord, dear brother and sister, are you storing treasure up in heaven as a citizen here? 
on earth and of heaven? Are you planning and preparing, or in that planning and preparing, how do you build? Are you storing treasures up in heaven? Are you rich in this world, or only are you only seeking to accumulate in this world? Or are you also seeking to build up, to store up for there where moth and rust cannot come? In your life now, are you living toward heaven? In your life now, are you embracing your, your heavenly citizenship? Or is it just about achieving in this life, excelling in this life? This is a message for those who plan without considering eternity. We heed to what James is calling us. Instead, you ought to be committed to the and sovereign reign of God in these words, if the Lord wills. If the Lord wills. However, here's the problem. This does not come natural for us. We are naturally in opposition to God. We are naturally in rebellion to God. Uh, for the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God, for it does not submit to God's laws. Indeed, it cannot. Romans 8 verse 7. We are naturally in opposition to God. We naturally contest the rule. There is great and severe consequences for this judgment and perishing. Or uh, oh, do you not know that the unrighteous not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the immoral or idolat idolater or the adulterer or men who practice homosexuality, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. Indulging in themselves, indulging in their sins, will not inherit the kingdom of God and will bring upon them God's judgment. And he said to me, it is done on the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give from the spring of water, water of life without payment. The one who conquers will have this inheritance and I will be his God and he will be my son. But as for the cowardly, the faithless, the detestable, as for murderers and sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters and all liars, their portion will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. There we see this judgment, this perishing that comes upon those who give themselves to their own temporary indulgences. Blessed are those who wash their feet, who wash their robes, so that they may have the right to the tree of life, and that they may enter the city by the gates, outside of the dogs, the sorcerers, and the sexually immoral, and murderers and idolaters, and everyone who loves and practice falsehood, Revelation 22, 14 to 15. But there's great and wonderful news, brothers and sisters. Friends, there's great news. Romans 5 verse 8, God demonstrates His own love towards us while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For God so loved the world that whosoever believes in Him will not perish but have everlasting life. Second Corinthians 5.21 He made Him a new new sin to be sin for us so that people can become the righteousness of God. So even now this message may be stopping you dead in your sinful tracks and you may say, what do I do? Well, God has already done it for you. He sent His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to pay the penalty for all your sins that if you confess your sins, believe in Jesus, God saves you. God adopts you into His family. God fills you with His Spirit and God sets you on a course where you will be with Him forever. As we conclude, when it comes to life, we naturally get ahead of ourselves. We do not regard God and we live as if we brought ourselves into this world. As if we give ourselves air to breathe every day. As if we sustain and control our lives. We do this naturally and we will continue to live like this and will inevitably draw out the righteous indignation and judgment of God. But we can be saved. We would, would we come and submit under the good and, 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 and gracious will of God for all? This is God's will. This is God's will that you be sanctified. This is God's will that you be sustained. This is God's will that you be secured. This is God's will that you say, if the Lord wills, I will live and do that. Life is complex. Life is certain. Life is brief. Come to Him who takes upon Himself our cares. Come to Him who all things who fully is in His control. Come to Him who gives life, not just helps us. You do not have to keep up with the burden of living presumptuously, not when He is near. Dear brothers and sisters, rest in the nearness of God, the God who is in control. Amen. May the Lord bless you. Let's pray. 
Oh God, we thank you for your word this morning and we do pray that you would help us to not live presumptuously, oh God. Help us to not live ahead of you, Lord. Help us to live, oh God, knowing that you are in control, knowing that you will, oh God, and knowing that you work all things together for our good. Bless us now in this day, oh God, and continue to care, continue to sustain, and continue to undertake for all our needs as we ask you these mercies in Jesus' name with thanksgiving. Amen.